and thanking the WeWorks team for, you know, inviting me to talk, giving me this opportunity to talk about something I've worked on. I'm, I'm really grateful. My name is Emir Kweri and earlier this year, I was, a digital, I was a Google Summer of Code intern with Kubernetes. Um, and I'm a contributor to Kubernetes too. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub at Sumtochi Amar. So today I'll be talking about role assisted, tool assisted RBAC for operators. So RBAC is role based access control. And um, if operators aren't given enough RBAC, they become kind of cranky and start spitting out errors. So we are basically talk, going to talk about around tools that help <clears throat> tools that help you manage this op the RBAC for these operators. So first, I'm just going to go over what RBAC is. Um, RBAC is one of the ways that in Kubernetes that you can control who can do what with which resources in the cluster. So we are going to break down that down a little further. So the who talks about users, groups, service accounts that you know interact with the cluster, and what is basically various kubectl commands that you know like kubectl apply for you to create pods, create deployments, which are the resources. You have to have enough permissions and. Role based access control, RBAC, is one of the ways that you could give these permissions. It's pretty flexible, it's granular, and it maps easily to you know, resources and operations that you can perform in the cluster. So, you know, you say kubectl delete, and you know that you should give the operator or user or group um, service accounts are for applications and operators that run on your cluster. Um, users are groups, are people that interact with the cluster. So whoever it is or whatever it is that wants to perform an action on the cluster has to be, has to have enough permissions. So um, the four objects on RBAC that are associated um, on Cuban, on for Kubernetes that are associated with RBAC are, you know, the cluster role bindings, the cluster roles, the role binding and the role. Um, the cluster role binding and the the cluster rule binding and the rule do the same thing, but the cluster is for at the cluster level. It's cluster scoped. It applies to the whole cluster. While a rule binding applies to a particular namespace. So when you apply a rule, it is applied to um, a particular namespace or it just uses the default namespace for the cluster. But for the role binding, you don't need to specify a namespace. For the cluster role binding, you don't need to specify a namespace because it applies to the whole cluster. The same thing goes for cluster roles and roles. Cluster roles are, are roles that apply to the whole cluster, while the role just applies within a particular namespace. So we are going to look at what the YAML for these objects look like. So the first one here is a role, and the second one is a role binding. So the role, um, for, for the role, you have to specify the API groups the resource and then verbs. This is the API groups and resource define the resource that you want to give access to and the verbs define what you can do with this resource. So here it just says this rule contains permission for getting, watching and listing pods. Um, and then if we move over to the rule binding, the rule as the name implies, the rule binding as the name implies, binds a rule to a user. It could be a group, it could be a service account that it binds the role to the what, like who can do what with whoever it binds to can basically carry out whatever permissions that the role contains. So um, here it's binding to the user gene, it's binding the role, this role that we just went over to the a user called Jane. So it basically means that Jane is going to be able to watch list and get pods in the cluster. So in summary, this role gives whoever is binded to the access to read pods. That's a pod reader role. Then here we are binding it to Jane. So Jane has permissions for reading pods. Um, so we have a bunch of predefined roles in the cluster. These are roles that sort of Kubernetes pre-creates so that it's sort of easy. There are common roles that you sort of need to get started. We have the cluster admin and admin, and these are privileged roles. Um, 
the cluster admin is self is self superior to the admin in that it can create and edit namespaces, resource quotas, and some few resources. But most mostly the admin can do can create, delete, you know, a lot of resources apart from namespaces and resource quota. So that's basically where it differs. The cluster admin is obviously a bigger role. Then you have the edit permissions too, and then the view permissions. These are just very scoped. Um, these are scoped rules. The view permissions allows you to only view resources on the cluster. Why edit allows you to, you know, edit them, you know, make changes to them and stuff like that. There are also a bunch of other ones. These aren't the only list of predefined rules in the cluster. Um, so now we are going to go over how. We're going to go over how um, role-based access control ties into GitOps. So normally when you're using GitOps, there's usually a controller that runs in the cluster. It's probably this controller that pulls and applies your changes and or reconciles the actual states, you know, to your desired states that is stored somewhere. And for the for the controller to successfully apply this manifest, it needs to have the permissions to create all the objects in that in the manifest that it wants to apply for it to reconcile probably it has to get the resources to check their state it needs to have the permissions to get these resources and more oh okay um so for um for for an operator to apply a cluster rule, um, it needs to have a superset of the rules, of the rules that the the rule contains. Um, let me sort of go back to what we've done. So, for a an operator to apply the rule that we have here, it needs to not only be able to create rules on the, in the cluster, but also it should have the permissions to also get watch and list pods. So it not only needs to be able to create the rules, but it needs to also have permissions to each role that is contained within the role it wants to apply. So yeah, so obviously it entails a lot of permissions. So most operators now, are uh, they use a default role, cluster admin role, which it's it allows the, operator to do a lot, but it's not exactly least privilege. Like, could we make that better? Could we make the cluster more secure by giving the operators only permissions to what they need to do? So basically giving the operators that work in our cluster more granular permission, more defined permissions. Um, yeah, so um, the problem that sometimes arises with giving granular R back is when these permissions are not an enough, the operator you know, can't do his work correctly. It starts to spit out errors like, oh, I'm forbidding from creating this resource. And its work is basic, basically becomes incomplete at that point. It can't function. It becomes like um, a bottleneck. So um, that's also something else. So it has to be the exact amount. If, it's, if you give it two small permissions, then it can't perform its, its functions very well. So um, it basically now becomes a manual process of looking through the, the manifest, looking at each resource that the manifest con contains, and then updating a corresponding role for the operator. And anytime that manifest changes, the role too has to change, else the operator will not be able to apply the new changes. Anytime you add an extra resource to the manifest. Maybe you had just a deployment before, but now you've added a service. The role also has to be updated from permissions for not just deployments, but the permissions for applying and creating a service also has to be added. So it becomes this manual process. Um, and you know, is some is is a problem I faced when creating operators during my internship with Kubernetes, and you know start thinking of ways to overcome this problem and make the whole process better. So I developed a simple tool called RBRAC Gen. 
it's used to automate the generation of rules and rule bindings for manifest is it simply scans it simply scans the manifest for you know the various resources in it and then it adds the rule to them and then if it comes across a cluster rule it adds the rule the rules you know as we specified before for it to apply a rule it needs the operator needs to have permissions to everything that the rule is doing so it also does that for you it adds the roles to the rule of the operators and it provides you know efficient and well defined permissions for the operator it's something that is could make the whole process of generating r back for operators automated it could remove the human elements and reduce errors in the process for creating our back so um there's also something we could go a step further and further reduce the amount of permissions that an operation an operator needs on the cluster so um you could pre-apply the cluster rules and rules yourself as you know a higher privileged person on the cluster so the operator no longer requires the additional rules that the cluster rule was supposed to give it sort of reduces the amount of permissions and rules that the role of the operations is supposed to, operator is supposed to contain and arba too can help with this by passing a flag into the tool you it sort of skips the rules of the cluster rule it doesn't add it to the role of the corporate um, operator so you know you, if you still wanted to go this route of you know further reducing the permissions of the of the operator the arba tool can also help with this so um, I'm just going to do a quick demo um, of what the tool looks like and using it. So I'm just going to share my screen again to a terminal. So is this is going to be a very quick and short demo. It's simply getting the, the manifest of Flannel, uh, which is a CNI for Kubernetes. And then it basically tries to generate the R back for the manifest. So first, um, so here we see the manifest that we probably want to get a role for, we want to give a role to an operator so it can apply this manifest. So we can see here that it contains, so for an operator to successfully apply this, it needs to have, you know, the, rule to create the pod security policy um the cluster rule and it doesn't just need all this but it also needs each of these rules within the cluster rule this is a cluster rule it needs to also have access to create a cluster um binding so you get the idea each you basically step through each object in the manifest and then generate a rule for it so we can really simplify this by just using the RBAC gen tool. I already have it installed on my machine. So now the rule has been created. It's basically the generated rule for the operator. You can see that it adds, it adds the rules for the pod security permissions and all that. But also, it also adds, we can also see that it adds, all the all the rules in the cluster rule that the operator needs to apply because that gives the operator su sufficient permissions to apply the manifest. You can see it's getting the pods. It needs to list and watch nodes. It needs to patch the node status. So it's basically took out all this and put it in the operator rules for you. So if you also wanted to, you didn't want you wanted to pre-apply the cluster rule. You don't want the operator to have these additional permissions that it might not need. You could simply pass in a supervisory rule. Um, you could use under rules YAML so that we can see the difference. So yeah, we can see now that we know it no longer has the permissions for creating ports. Just each each resource that is in the manifest. Yeah. So I'm just going to quickly summarize now. Oh. Um, sorry, let me reshare, let me resume sharing. Uh, so in summary, um, RBAC is a way of 
sorry. Can you see my slides now? Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick summary now. Uh, the RBAC is a way to control access to your cluster. It has four major objects in the, that you can use to define RBAC, which is the cluster role, cluster role binding, the role binding, and the role. The cluster role and role binding as cluster wide resources, they apply to the whole cluster, while the role and the role bindings are namespace codes. And RBAC relates into GitHub's because it, the controllers that implement that apply the changes reside in the cluster and they require permissions to be able to successfully apply the changes. And RBAC generator is a tool that you could use to generate granular permissions for these operators so that you don't give it the whole permissions like a cluster admin and yet it still has sufficient permissions to you know function correctly. Uh, thank you for listening to me uh, on this talk. I still want to thank the Reef team, especially Tamo and Stacey. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub at Tomtochi Amar. Thank you.